beer battered pickerel. Look at this beauty. So you saw a little bit of that footage as we opened the show. Uh, I don't have to tell you what an incredible joy it is to go out and to be fishing and to get some of these beauties. So we've got uh, pickerel uh, and we've also got a couple beautiful sides. So so we've got, so Dakota's got a yeah. drink. Tonight we got another drink coming to you, hardened lemon iced tea. So this is a drink you're gonna wanna make if you got a big group of people coming over, barbecue, dinner, whatever. This is gonna keep them staying around. You got a cord jar. Look right? at the size of this cord jar. We're yeah. going to fill this right up and people are going to be able to enjoy this all night long. But all, all, in all seriousness, we got to keep graduating. Like <laughs> the cord jars, they got to keep getting bigger yeah, every bigger Wednesday bigger. night. Yep. So this is, what is this? This is two gallon? This is two or one gallon. One gallon. So one gallon it'll be two gallon drink. next week, three gallon the weekend, <laughs> uh, week after that. Um, so let's get serious and let's get started. Um, Bailey had a really good idea too uh, from our, we had a a great little beach restaurant called Shutters on the Beach. Yeah, and uh, my idea was because when the when the fries come out of the deep fryer, they're covered in oil, and usually you just throw salt on it. But yeah. what we used what we used to do is we used to take thyme and rosemary, chop it up real fine, and throw it in the salt. And what it does is just add an extra boost of flavor right on top of the fries when you, they first come out, and it like melts into the fries, mm. and it just tastes <laughs> amazing. So oh, it's so amazing! And you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna elevate that one step further, and we're going to take and we're gonna put a lemon zest lemon in there. Zest, yeah. So it's gonna be lemon. Oh, yeah. Time, yeah, rosemary, yep. and that's the beautiful thing about these live broadcasts is we don't have to have a conversation just between the nope. three of us. Nope. We want to talk to you. Yep. We want to hear what you have to say. We want to hear the best recipes yep. you've ever had, and we want to get some really good ideas from you too. So the first thing I think we got to do is let's talk a little bit about this beautiful fish, oh, yeah. the pickerel. So this is the one that's already surrendered its uh, flesh, <laughs> but I just thought I'd tell you a little something. Right so yeah, so. Uh, we're doing it a couple different ways. So some folks, just hold that up, babe. Some people love the taste of the skin. You'll hear us time and again. We always talk about the skin. There's tons of flavor in the skin. I mean, what would you do if you saw somebody tossing like chicken skin, right? right. You're like, oh, what are you doing? No, I need Get it. Get rid of all the flavor. <laughs> okay, but some people, you can't have it for a whole bunch of different reasons. Some people, it's a texture thing, yep. whatever's going on. But when you can see through the flesh, you know that you've got that pretty clean. Yep. But for us, even this, this I'm going to save, oh, we're going to do a stock. It. Yeah, you want to keep it fish stocks. There's all kinds of stuff. I mean, fish soup, if you've ever had it, is incredible, man. It's delicious. And the thing about making a fish soup is one fish is never enough yep. to make a really good soup, a really good chowder. So what we always do is we take these and then we make a stock. And let's say we have a couple gallons. So you take that couple gallons, you reduce it down till it's maybe only uh, 250 milliliters or one cup of liquid. And then that liquid, we put it in the freezer. Yep. The next time you're making something like a stew or a, uh, you know, well, like I mean, even, chowder. I mean, even if you're doing stir fries, if you're someone who loves stir fries, oh, the flavor stir -fry of fish, fish. make ice cubes out of that fish stock. And what you do when you make a stir fry is you only have to pull out one ice cube, toss in your stir fry, and you've got beautiful, a beautiful fish sauce. Adds a little bit of extra flavor. Yeah. Okay, so what should we start with first? Let's go. Bailey's going to start on yeah. his uh, herb salt. Yeah. Now, uh, I want to start off by saying I've got the deep fryer preheated, so I'm using canola oil. You can use peanut oil. You can use uh, vegetable yeah. oil. Grapeseed oil. Yeah, we've got it uh, preheated to 375. So 375 degrees, anything lower than that, and what happens is it doesn't cook fast enough and you'll start soaking up that oil. Instead of getting a real nice crisp edge, you'll get that kind of soppy soaking mess. And that's what you want to do when you pull it right out of that deep fryer as well. You want to get that onto into a bowl with some paper towel or something so it soaks up any excess oil. And then also as you drop that salt on top of that batter, that's also going to pick up some of the moisture from that oil. So Bailey and I are just talking about these and maybe we'll give them a good look at yeah, yeah. while we're doing this. Uh, Bailey and I are just talking about these fresh herbs. So the rosemary is actually an evergreen. So because it's an evergreen, it smells incredible. It smells really but because good. it's an evergreen, it, green, it has very woody stems. And you can see that. Bailey's going to show you how to... So yeah. It actually breaks off. So, so what you want to do when you're putting it into your salt is if you just grab the top and pinch and pull down, you can see the woody stem and what's left is all the leaves, all the good stuff that you want. 
The thyme is a little different. The thyme doesn't have as woody of a stem and you can chop it finely enough to where it doesn't matter and also it has a ton of flavor in there as well. Well, and that, but that also depends on the variety because sure. some varieties of thyme, you'll find it does also have a very woody stem. This is not, this is tender, this is green and Bailey's gonna chop that right up. Now I wanna show you this, the salt that we've selected. And the salt, you can have a lot of fun making these herb salts. So this is a uh, sea salt. It's very moist, very, it's actually damp. You can see it's almost moving a bit like sand. What we like to do, we'll take four or five really great salts and put them together. So you can do like a coarse pink Himalayan. You, uh, you can do a, a coarse gray, even black salt. So you can imagine you've got all these incredible colors. You can put a smoked in there. And let me tell you something, this is not just for French fries. Think about your steaks. And you know, think about a venison steak with an herb salt, you will need nothing else. Believe me, you'll need nothing else. So Bay's gonna chop this up good and fine, and then what he'll do, he'll start layering it in the pan or in the bowl, and the key is that when you do uh, end up putting this together, to keep it so that it turns out really nice, just turn it over like once a day if you did, just shake it, turn it over, what happens is it'll get rid of any of that moisture. While we we're uh, off the camera there, let's have a look at this. I want to talk a little bit about uh, fish. So these fish are, uh, this is a, like for us, what we were catching out there, this fish is, it's, a, it's kind of a small uh, pickerel. But uh, so the belly, the belly meat on it is very, very thin. So what I want to do is I want to show you something really simple. Now, these fillets we took and look at that beautiful flesh we took the scales off so that's ready to go so the important thing is when you do scale if you're going to take a paring knife and go in the opposite direction of the scales so that's very simple to do let me tell you something before you do especially with pickerel best to do it outside you know, unless you want it to look like confetti yeah. on a wedding day he do it outside in, he came in from early had it in his hair all up his arms i was covered everywhere so now, for those of you who don't want any of the skin on, here's, here's a really simple way to do pickerel quickly. The great thing is about uh, round fish like this, is they kind of give you a little bit of a guide. So you can see here where the flesh begins, how it comes up the back, you can feel it, and it goes right down to the tail. So if I want to do this by remo and remove the uh, skin, I'll just, I don't need to scale it in order to do that. I'll just run my knife up in here and passes through very cleanly. Slice that. And then, excuse me, I'm just working on a tight, little bit of a tight space here. And then I'll just literally run my knife down the backbone. And what you can do at home, what I'm feeling is, I can literally feel that backbone as I run down. And when I get to this point, now you can use a fillet knife. The reason I'm using a chef knife tonight is because if you don't have a fillet knife, I want you to know that you can do it with a flat knife like this, with a chef's knife. When you get to this point, so in this area you'll have all of the rib cage, okay? The rib cage runs right in this area here. As you get past that, you can pass the knife through, there we go, and you'll reach and just literally, there we go. We'll take it right down to the end, we're going to leave that intact. Then. I'm gonna run my knife along the edge and I can literally pierce through and I'm gonna cut right through those bones. I remember the first time you ever taught me to fillet a fish, it went nothing like what you're seeing right now. Well, and I just, <laughs> I just skipped a beat there for a second. So the reason that I leave this on is because I can, I've got lots to hold on to. So when you're working with a knife, your, your direction of the, the knife, you always want that to be away from you. So I'm going to put a little slit in it right here. And towards your son. Yeah, no, <laughs> trust me, I'm going away from you. Uh, and then literally just work your way down, and as you do, you're going to pull off that beautiful fillet. So you can see there's almost no waste here. And now that I've got that off, I want to show you the rest of this. You can see that's where my knife slipped there. Uh, so there is a center bone here, and you can just literally run your knife along this. Now on a bigger fish, you can literally run that and take those belly ribs off. But what I'm going to do for this purpose, and it, it really works nicely for uh, deep frying, is I've got a beautiful tail piece, 
And then I've got this top loin part, which is just perfect. Now this is so thin, uh, I'm not gonna discard that, but for me, this is going to go into that fish stew. And I'm gonna flake off any of that beautiful flesh. And when I freeze that stock, it's gonna be right in there. So I'm gonna have the beautiful taste and fragrance and, of the, and flavor of the stock, but at the same time, it's gonna have the texture of all that beautiful flaky white fish. Here, take a look at this uh, herb salt here for a second. You can see how all that thyme and rosemary and even the lemon zest has all moved in together. And the thing I like about the lemon zest idea is a lot of people when they're having fish and chips, they'll take lemon and sprinkle it on their burr to their pig roll. Yep. And now you have that same sour, sweet coming into your fries. I think it's gonna be amazing. It's a beautiful herb crust salt for anything. Like if you were pan frying your, uh, your fish one night or pretty much like dad said, anything, your steaks, anything you want, incredible. right in the lemon zest, yep. just brings it to life. You can see I got a full jar. Beautiful. So now you know how to make a really good herb salt. If you've never done it before, you know you're going to want to give it a shot. I think it's time. Yeah, it's time ready? for a little mixology. Alrighty. Hardened lemon iced tea. And I mean, like we said before, this drink is if you're having a big group of people over, barbecue, dinner, now this is what you want to make. We're going with some Southern Comfort, which has really nice notes of whiskey and spices and all kinds of great flavors. We're going to throw some peaches in there, obviously some lemons. We've got some black tea that we brewed earlier and some gorgeous clover honey. Now, if you don't know, there are many different types of honey. You have clover honey, you can have dark, dark honey, buckwheat, like buckwheat honey, buckwheat. right? So this is a clover honey, much lighter, and it's going to be a little bit more mild in flavor. But I mean, if you like to experiment, go with one of those buckwheat honeys or something They're like that. The intense. flavor will blow your mind. The way we're going to start this, we're going to add some iced tea into this right away. Or sorry, not iced tea, some ice. There we go. With this big gallon pitcher. Good. A nice Making a nice mess here. And then like I said, it's for a lot of people. So we're going to start off with a cup of Southern Comfort. Now you'll see here I have a liquid measure. What you want to make sure is that there's dry measure. Which is something like you'll see. It's on the board. Ah, uh, on the board? Right over there, down there. Okay. This is a dry measure. So this is meant for dry ingredients, flour, sugar, yeast, that, those types of things. This is a wet measure. You want to use this for any liquids. They are not the same thing. So we're going to go with a cup of this, which is eight ounces. Where's our cup measure here? One cup. This may seem like a lot, but this is for a large group of people, folks. It smells amazing. Oh, oh smell right? that. You no, get I, I a smell apricot, that. peach flavors, that's and that's what we're doing is we're hinting. That's why we use these garnishes like the peach, right? We're hinting to the flavors that are in the drink already by adding this, because Southern Comfort has a lot of hints of apricot and peach. So we're just gonna dump that right in. I do like adding the alcohol right away onto the ice. Just a preference of mine. Gonna add in so this is that black tea black that we tea. brewed earlier you can do a different types of tea you know you can do steep tea that have different flavors into it using loose leaf you know getting into coconut and raspberry flavored I myself just like a straight up black unsweetened tea this will be sweetened a little bit by some of that honey that we add in nice. oh yeah this recipe will be online right after by the way so you can make it this coming weekend now Lemon, what we're gonna do to begin with is we're gonna roll this lemon. You wanna roll it so that you loosen up some of that pulp and juice. Yeah. You wanna make sure to get as much juice out of a lemon as you can, so rolling it just helps to loosen up it on the inside you before you cut it. You get the most juice out of one lemon as you can. You wanna put your weight into it. And then we're just gonna, these are actually pretty good. There's not many seeds. You always wanna watch for seeds. No one wants a seed in their drink. Just gonna squeeze some of this fresh lemon juice in there. There's nothing like fresh lemon juice. We are gonna add a little bit of lemonade in here just to make up for some of it. There we go. And then actually, got my reamer there. This is a reamer. This helps get all that pulp and juice out really nicely. That's a really good tool to really get as much. You can use it for anything lemon juice or if you wanna make some fresh squeezed orange juice in the morning, that tool is really important to have in your kitchen. And then I would be adding the lemon zest in here, but in this pitcher, we don't want to uh, bog up that little spout down there at the bottom, but the lemon zest will come from when we slice up these lemons. 
and we toss the slices actually in. And what you want to do is, before your barbecue, you'd actually be great to make this the night before, because then you can let, you'll see all these things we're going to toss in here. Do it the night before, toss in the fridge, get it chilled, and all those flavors are gonna infuse and come together. Especially those peaches, if you let those sit overnight and then you eat one of those pe oh, yeah. peaches the next day. Drunk peaches. Yep, yeah, literally be full of all everything right. that's in there. Get rid of those. All right, and now we're gonna add just a little bit of that lemonade just to bring up that liquid level a little bit. There we go. Gorgeous color. Oh, look at the right? color of that. I mean, we're going to already start to eat with our eyes, as we always say. Now, honey, this clover honey, that's going to bring some of that sweetness to uh, that unsweetened tea. That's awesome. But the nice thing about using honey, first of all, it's natural. You have the ability to support one of some of your local glowers. This is a local honey. Wherever you are, support local. Buy local honey. So I can support them instead of using sugar. Honey brings that flavor as well. Everybody loves yeah. it. Honey is great. And like the way this smells right now, between the, the lemon tea and Ooh. the black tea and the southern comfort, this is honestly, it literally just smells like iced tea. Yep. But as soon as you add those peaches. And oh the yeah, lime, it's gonna be incredible. Oh. So this is just carbonated water. I like carbonated water because it brings another texture to the drink. Yeah. I mean, on a hot day, you don't think if you had a glass of water and a glass of carbonated water, this is so much better. It cools you off. So you'll see as soon as we add this in, it's gonna you'll see those bubbles start to form in it. Look at that. Oh it's yeah. Alive. It's alive. It's alive. It's like having bread without yeast and then bread with yeast. That's like having a drink without carbonation and then a drink with carbonation. Alrighty. Now we're gonna mix some of this together. First, we're gonna take some of these mint leaves. So mint leaves are great to add into a drink like this because you can just put them in whole, no need to chop them. Those oils will come right out of the leaves into the drink if you let it sit. If yeah. you drink it right away, you're probably not going to taste them too much. But if you let it sit overnight in the fridge, you'll taste it big time. It's no going to infuse just like steeping. Oh yeah, yeah, just like steeping. No different than if you rub the leaves between your fingers and you heat up those oils and stuff. You, and then you smell your fingers, you smell your hands, smells like mint. No different than if you leave it overnight. So that's about probably around nine leaves we're going to toss in there. now. Gonna take some of these lemon slices. And what you wanna do is you wanna take your time here. Even though these are just lemon slices, you want it to look beautiful, okay? Each step you take to make your drinks look more gorgeous, your guests are just gonna like it even more. So we're just taking time, making sure that all of these levels smell so delicious, good. eh? It smells so good. We're just gonna toss these in. First, I'm gonna give this a quick stir before I toss that in. Bring all that together. Toss in some of these lemon slices right on top. That southern comfort smells so good. Oh, you get those notes of the southern apricot. Comfort, no kidding, man. Okay, and then peaches. You know, peaches are one of my absolute favorites. I got married in Georgia, so peaches have a, uh, they're close to my Georgia heart. Georgia peach! <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna take that. You have the pit on this side. We're just gonna do slices here. I'm gonna cut that in half. If you can see that, half. Half again, and we're just gonna toss those in. Man, that's gonna be so good. And like Bailey said, if you eat these peaches afterwards, they're gonna be drunk peaches. All right, cut this in half again. Split that baby out. Man, that's Take that pit out, split again. I'm gonna keep dropping these in. That's so beautiful. Oh, man. So, you know, that, you that know, was easy. That was five minutes. You can make this, toss it in their fridge, or serve it right away, and you're ready to go. Everyone can show up, and they got a drink, right? Toss right. a little bit more of that southern Yeah, I think just a little bit more. <laughs> and <laughs> mix that together. Only one cup. Yeah, yeah, one yeah. Cup. So, you know. your discretion. Throw me, hey, you know what out there? Throw me some of those hearts if you're loving this drink. Oh, yeah. I, I got it. We got to show Dakota the love. Oh, this yeah, is a come good on. drink. These drinks are incredible, guys. We're giving away some amazing recipes. Give yeah. that a try. Mm. Ice cold. Yep. Peach. Lemon. It's fresh. Yep. Like you said, the carbonation. Oh, the carbonation brightens brings it up. Life. Also, those little bubbles they carry the flavor. Yep. And the thing is, you don't need. You just need a little bit of each mm. thing. Some lemonade, some tea. You know, 
The tea is what also refreshes you. It gives you a, on a day, a hot day, a little bit of caffeine. If you use non, you know, you don't want to use caffeine free, it'll give you a nice jump through. And the day. let's talk about a couple other things. So let's say we got to do this non alcoholic. Yep. Because we know some of you, you can't have alcohol, alcohol for a variety of reasons. Plenty of pregnant women in the summer. Exactly. <laughs> so, one way you can infuse this and bring it to another level, we yep. tried this, we took and we juiced a couple peaches. Oh, yeah. So, you have a pure peach juice. Yep. Drop that peach juice in there, beautiful. Increase the amount of mint and maybe increase the amount of honey. Yep. All of a sudden, you have a beautiful virgin. What's this called again? Hard lemon iced tea. And I mean, if you want to bring in some of the notes for a virgin of the Southern Comfort, Angostura bitters is a great way to add in a little bit of that spice flavor. A lot of the flavors that you would uh, bring with whiskey into it, add yep. some of that in there. Three or four dashes, and that's going to bring that to life. I'm sold. How about you? So, the next thing we want to do is we want to do a little technique with the beer batter. So, let's put together yeah. this beer batter. So, the first thing that's going to go in is we got to start with the base of flour. So, just a straight all purpose flour is going to work great. Um, and what we'll do is we're gonna we're gonna talk about a few flavor ingredients. Now listen, I gotta tell you, um, I've had the absolute privilege of serving a lot of really cool people. Uh, you know, presidents, prime ministers, uh, celebrities, and I've had that opportunity. I can tell you every step along the way, everybody always gets the same potato. It's either the same potato, the same pickle, the same flour. And you might ask yourself at home, well, how do I make really great food and how do I do it easily? You just have to find little ways to increase the flavor profile just slightly. Just like the salt. There. What Bailey did with the salt. Yeah. Perfect example. Yeah. I mean, you've seen salt. I can give you a salt that looks like this. There's a hundred different kinds of salt. Which is just, you know, straight salt. You can have that salt. Or you can have this salt. Now, which one are you going to choose? We're talking about pennies per serving here. A little bit of fresh uh, herb. A little bit of lemon and you've got yourself an incredible cooking element. So, let's start with uh, two cups of all-purpose flour. And pour, important for this, before you get to the beer, get all your dry ingredients incorporated first and get them mixed together evenly before you add the beer. That way everything's mixed in there really nicely. Uh, yeah, let's go with three. So we'll do three. Three cups of flour. And now let's do a half cup of the uh, cornmeal. So cornmeal, as you know, cornmeal is beautiful. Corn, when it's toasted, think about uh, cornbread. Now, I wouldn't want to do a, a complete bag. Yeah, I, <laughs> but you said I like corn think about bread. cornbread. Um, but what you're going to get is you're going to get a texture thing. So we're not only talking about flavor. So we're going to have this beautiful golden batter. We want something with some texture. So this will stand up. So let's put, actually, let's put a... Um, Let's put a full cup in. Full cup. Next thing we've got here, so this, we've got a little bit of paprika, and we've got some cayenne pepper. Now, you don't want to get these two babies mixed up. Actually, this is the cayenne. It's a little more orange in color. <laughs> As you say it. <laughs> if you get these mixed up, you're going you're gonna to be in trouble. So, literally, what we're going to do is we're going to take about the equivalent of about a teaspoon. Now, you could, uh, you could add pepper to this afterwards. But one of the things about a, any batter is you want to make sure you get the seasoning in the batter as well. And then we're going to take a heaping tablespoon of the paprika. So paprika, you know, these are peppers as well. Nice smoked paprika, tons of flavor. Remember, we're looking for those levels of flavor. So that's why we've got to get it done. And when you're dealing with flavors such as strong as these and even cornmeal, you want to make sure to always mix your dry ingredients first before you do wet. But the last thing you want is somebody to be eating their fish and get a big bite of paprika or anything like that. <laughs> or pepper. Like, oh, no, yeah. no, thank you. Okay, go for it. Bring that one together. I always like to add uh, fresh ground black pepper as well. Whenever you're using black pepper, make sure it's fresh ground every single time. So we're going to add a bunch of black pepper in this. And the reason fresh ground black pepper is that when you grind it fresh, you're going to activate all that flavor that's locked up in those beautiful little berries. Oils, right? We're, we've been talking about oils a lot the past couple of weeks. A lot of oils. Everything has oils. Think when you toast the spice or when you grind the peppers down, you're releasing. Everything has some kind of moisture in it. Not to mention and the that, fact that the black... That has a taste. Not to mention the fact that the black pepper will hold longer when it's whole. When it's whole, that's it'll true. stay fresher. So this looks great. Now, I get to do the fun part here. 
Come on over. We want this is the, this is the this is if you're on your pontoon boat, this is gonna and you don't have a cold one beside you. This is what's gonna hurt you. Oh, yeah. That was a good crack. Yeah, that, that was, was a good, good crack. Okay, so we're gonna make it rain. Now, what you want is a, a nice pilsner. We have done before a, a dark beer, uh, but uh, you know, it just depends how bold you want those flavor. The darker the beer, the richer the flavor. The darker the batter. It just makes sense. Now, how are we doing there? We're gonna need another one. Okay, crack another one. Oh, punish Wait, them. ready? Punish them. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah! See, my crack wasn't good. You no, got no. like 20 years of crack that's, experience. That's exactly. <laughs> okay. Go ahead and twist that up. So what we want is we want the texture. Keep in mind that as you're adding the beer, that uh, it will thicken up as it sits too. So you want something that's the consistency of like a really heavy cream. Just get that all whisked up. I'll let you keep working on that. Uh, yeah, you probably don't need too much more. So let's talk about potatoes. And let's talk about all the different cuts that we can make with russet potatoes. Um, now, when you're making fresh cut fries, there's a couple things that you want to get set out before you even begin. Number one, you want to make sure that you have a bowl of water ready to go. So just like apples or pears or some of the things that when exposed to oxygen, they begin to degrade, the color changes, and they look unpleasant. That's one reason why we want these potatoes going into the water. The other reason is it gets rid of, and you'll see in the bottom of that bowl, you'll see some of that starch. It's going to be off, it's going to be in the water, and when we pull them out and dry them off, they're going to be perfectly ready to deep fry. How's that coming? Good. Good. I'm going to try something cool. My arm's getting tired. Water. Good. Just bring it right together, make sure it's nice consistency. Your yeah. arm's getting tired? Yeah, it is. Why don't you come, sir? You know what? How old's Jim Shockey? Oh, I don't know. I'm not even going to say because the man, like I've seen you training, Mr. Shockey. You are, uh, you are uh, an inspiration, let me tell you that. So you better work out. If he can carry a 100 pound pack up and down the road, you can definitely do that. Okay, so let's do some potatoes. Yeah. I just need my knife. I'm going to take this one. Excuse me, bud. Taking my knife. You want to just uh, tell them one more time about your drink there, son? Yeah, so what we made here, if you're just joining us, is a hard lemon iced tea we took, and we used some Southern Comfort, which has, you know, whiskey flavors in it, apricot, peach, you know, like, it's incredible. It takes whiskey to the next level. We used some carbonated water, fresh brewed black tea, a little bit of lemonade, also some fresh lemons in it. And then we drop some peaches in there and some fresh mint right into this jar, ready to go out to the table. Whenever you're having a barbecue or anything, it's ready to go. Put it in your fridge the night before, and you can serve your guests as soon as they show up. How's that coming along? Good. Okay, so let's talk about a few different cuts for fresh cut fries. So when you're talking about russets, you want to go ahead and leave, in my opinion, leave that skin on. Yep. You know, it's a great classic way to do a french fry, plus it's so fast, oh, and it's so simple, and there's tons of flavor, and why would you take it off? Life is difficult enough, leave the peel on the potatoes. <laughs> uh, so uh, what you want to do is start off by, and we're probably going to need a close-up of this one too, is you want to start off by giving yourself a good flat edge to work with. So always slice the potato, just slice it in half. And then what you can do is you're working with a good flat surface. Yeah, that's really important is the flat surface. The last thing you want is to cut yourself in the kitchen. And always, I'd say the most important thing about cutting for me that when I learned is always to have a flat surface. You have, don't have anything rolling on you and it's really easy to work with. And uniform size, especially when you're yep. deep frying, because uh, the problem is if you have something that's a great big wedge, you're gonna get something that's a little overcooked, a little undercooked, and you're just not gonna have the texture you're looking for. So you can see the method I'm doing here. I'm literally just making sure everything is roughly the same size. For me, I like big, long French fries. Great for dipping in ketchup and in this remoulade sauce we're gonna make. Hardy too. It's hardy, yeah. you know, and you know, the, the potatoes are beautiful. Yeah. So the russet potato is has, you know, a nice amount of starch. Um, and you can use white potatoes, you can use yellow potatoes, you can use red potatoes. But for me, the russet is the king when it comes to French fries. The best French fries. Absolutely. Potatoes. Yep. So I'm literally just going to keep slicing these up. I'm going to do one more here and then we'll hold and move on to the remoulade. Deep fryer's on. Deep fryer's hot. 
And you notice the order which we went. So that fish, uh, the batter is going to be holding there. Uh, it doesn't have to go into the refrigerator. It has nothing perishable in it. And it's ready to go as soon as we are. It's nice to let that batter rest though. What happens is some of the, uh, some of the starches, they relax and it means that your batter will be more consistent and we'll get some really great results. Fries, this is like being back at Shutters on the Beach. Yep. Uh, you know, I don't know, how many uh, hamburgers do you think we made there? A lot. I should be asking your brother, because you worked the window, but he did, he did the grill. I made enough hamburgers. Okay. I didn't make the hamburgers, did, yeah, I you, mixed the meat. <laughs> that was it. You made 50 pounds of burgers. You ate, dude, you, you ate the burgers. Let's be honest. I had a lot of burgers. <laughs> okay. So, okay, so now the key is, we're just going to let these sit in the water for a minute. Uh, but while we do, or when we come back, uh, we're going to make sure whenever you're deep frying, what is the enemy of hot oil? Water. Water. I made yeah. that mistake in sure yeah, See that look? He knew what I was. He knew where I was going. That's I poured that's a cup a of water in by accident, and it literally went. That's the home done. That's the look the of experience. So um, what we'll do is we're going to cut some of these up. I'm actually going to uh, talk to Coda through this. So if you want to grab the camera, we want to do this nice close-up. Uh, let's get this remoulade sauce going, Code, so it can come together. Um, so literally, let's do... So the key to a really nice remoulade is, first of all, we've got some beautiful mayonnaise. So it's creamy and it's rich. Now, mayonnaise by itself is beautiful, but what the remoulade does is it just elevates it because you're going to get that, again, it's slightly sweet, slightly bitter and some of the ingredients are going to tell you all about that so get that mayo in there we'll just dump that whole thing in there and make sure it's mayonnaise <laughs> yeah no miracle whip please uh so and we'll have a recipe for mayonnaise uh for you to do if you want to do your own and then these little beauties so let me know can you shout give me a shout you know what these little beauties are anybody uh watching right now can you tell me what those are oh. Come on guys, let us know what these are. So those are capers, beautiful capers. And all we want to do, Code, is just make one pass over yep. them. So just a nice chop, one pass over. So we have beautiful texture. Great, and then let's put those in. Capers in. And then we've got these, uh, these beautiful uh, Let's put some of these in as well. So okay. we'll put some of those pickles in. Right, so, chop those yeah, in. so literally the thing about the pickle is you want to literally take it, just take a moment, slice it like this, quarter it lengthwise, then like this, and literally just make then when you do this, then a fine dice. So doing a fine dice makes it so it uh, will stand up and stick out, but also that it's it's bite size, so it's not going to be too big. Yep. When you put that in, that's going to be just perfect. You work on those, I'm going to bring this together. Then I'm going to put a couple spices in here as well. So I'm going to reach for this paprika, make sure I get the paprika. <laughs> and I'm just going to put a little bit of the paprika in there. I love it for that smoky flavor. I love it for the color. And then it's going to be lemons. So once again, you'll see you're going to need a lot of lemons if you're cooking with the outdoor chef. <laughs> Citrus is such an easy way to get flavor. That's perfect. Um, citrus is such an easy way to get flavor. Just chop them all up. We'll need them. Okay. Um, and for me, you can make a really fine remoulade. So this can go into the food processor or you can chop it up. But I like to have something with a little bit of texture. The, uh, the fish is so soft to begin with. Why not give it a bunch of flavor? So we're going to literally, we've got the zest in. And now we're going to put some of that beautiful juice in. Let's put some in here. Nice. Let that rain down. You can use just mayonnaise, but look at that. That just looks so much better and it's going to taste amazing. It's going to taste amazing. It's a beautiful remoulade sauce. It's our take on it. So it's pickles. You can yeah. put, if you want, if you want a little sweetness, if you have some bread and butter pickles, mm. some, you know, some sweet and sour oh, pickles, yeah. <laughs> they would be perfect in there. If you want a little bit of heat, you can put a pinch of cayenne. But this one is ready to go. You know what time it is? Time to start beer battering. So deep fry. It's time to deep fry. The first thing we're going to do is, because the fish cook fairly quickly, let's get some fries uh, rolling here. So I'm going to take and drain this off. And then we'll pat these dry. Yep. 
Yeah, I got it. Just gonna... Now what you so... want to do is, like we said before, you want to pat those dry. If you toss those in, even if they have, if you can see that, even if they have that slight residue of water on it, you toss in a whole handful, you're getting, that oil is going to react immediately and it could boil over. Yep. And you don't want that mess in your kitchen. It makes a terrible mess. Yeah, now you see we've got this underneath, uh, pretty much underneath the hood. Yep. And the reason why that works so good is we can turn that exhaust fan on. Now, whenever you're working with deep fryers, obviously this is never something that a child should be doing. Nope. This is for moms and dads. And, no, I'm good. <laughs> so in the basket, and the first thing you do is just drop them down. What I do, I just give that a little shake. You can see we've got just the right amount of water in there that it's not going to boil over. So while we're doing that, I'm going to get my uh, fish ready. All right. So the first thing that we have to do is we've got a little plate of all-purpose flour. Yeah. Now, yes, we did put some of the all-purpose flour in the beer batter. Yep. But one of the things, have you ever made a beer batter and then the batter just seems to jump off yeah, it? Yeah, it just falls off. Jumps the off it and it's in the deep fryer. So what we want to do is you want to take your beautiful pickerel and you just want to roll that so this little step here what happens is the starches in the flour they immediately bond to the flesh and then it bonds also to that beer batter making it stick beautifully so you can see we've got some yeah nice uh, tail pieces here we'll just line them up here as That's we some with the uh, skin on here. skin on skin off Personally, I just love the skin on. These would be perfect too. These are perfectly prepped and ready to go if you wanted to uh, uh, pan fry them. They're also ready to go. Now make sure when you're doing anything like this that this flour is contaminated. Now I know it sounds simple, but this flour is contaminated. If you put fish in it, if you leave this out, how long would it last if you put this in the fridge? If you want, if you were say making fish the next day. Well, you know, fish are fish are kind of unique in yep. that they're not like chicken. Yeah. So you know, you're no problem. You can reuse this for a week. You yep. just if fine. you put it in the fridge. But if you leave it out for any longer than an hour or something, I wouldn't use it again. Nope. Okay. So let's check out our uh, fries and see how they're coming along here. Oh, look at that! I'm starting to crisp up and get golden already. They look good, eh? Um, so the other thing that you want to make sure to have ready is you need a big bowl. And as much as all of that fat tastes so delicious, and let's talk a little bit about one of my favorite fats, and that is using shortening. Straight shortening as a fat in here is unbelievable. It takes your fries to the next level. Anytime that we do a restaurant, we use shortening. That lard just makes those fries taste incredible. So what I've actually done in this is I've got canola, but I had a pound of shortening, yep. and I put it in there. The flavor is amazing. Uh, shortening lasts longer in it the lost, deep fryer. It lasts 50% longer. Yeah, and the upside is too, is when you unplug it and it cools, it goes firm again. Yep. So you're not slopping it around if you store it for another use. So those are coming up nicely. Those That's looking orders. awesome. Yep. And let's have a look at this batter now. Looks like it's good consistency. You can see how it's actually settled a bit, like we said. Now that you left it, you can see how the consistency has actually changed. So the nice little, the great thing about using a beer batter is the fact that it's got all those incredible little bubbles going on in there. We, you know, we used to do it. Have a look over here, babe. This is a great way to know your fries are done. They're floating up at the top. Oh, yeah. They look, see that? They're floating right at the top. So I'm going to drain this for a moment before I tip it into the pan. And then we'll tip it into this. And this is where Bailey's herb salt comes in. So you toss it first like this, and then Bailey's herb salt is just going to melt on top of that. See, there's all that beautiful salt now all over that. And as that's hot, that salt is going to melt into that. Melt right in there. I love it. Some more of love it. Yeah, I love it. Okay, so that's good. Now, I'll tell you what, you want to get a plate for us that we can plate this on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this beer batter uh, ready to go in. Now, one of the key techniques when you're doing fish is if you take, let's take this beauty. I think this is going to be a hero right here. So this is the tail. You can see skin on. That is a perfect piece of fish. You know, I don't even want to tell you what you'd pay for that in a restaurant. But, you know, if you're uh, a fisherman, you know the value in it and take bringing that home. So what you do is literally take and lay it in that beer batter. 
get a nice coating going on it. And then this is the key. When you go to put it in, you're going to do a wave. Do the wave. Do the wave. It's literally, it's going to be the, it's an homage to the fish. It's the final flap. Literally do this. And what happens is as that oil hits the batter, it puffs up. And then what she does is she floats. And it'll float a little shake like this, and that's going to be right on the surface. Let's do another one of these beautiful tails. One thing you want to make sure of as well is not to crowd the deep fryer. If you crowd the deep fryer, what you'll end up doing is you'll end up, it'll attach and you'll have, <laughs> instead of fish tails, you'll have a big fish nugget. It'll just be a just giant nugget. So again, that flap. Now this, this technique applies whether you're doing chicken, you know, uh, chicken, fri rings. chicken fried steak, onion rings, and see how she floats like that? Now that'll stay up here in the surface. Super important to make sure that you have the right temperature. You can see we've got it set at 375. We're using our Cuisinart Professional Deep Fryer, which has beautiful recovery time. I'm going to sneak behind you. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I'm going to get a little lunch to wash. One of the best things that we do when you talk about different kinds of fish is when you take Lake Erie, the, the lake where we caught these, it's famous for yellow perch. Yes. You take those gorgeous little perch fillets and you do those in a beer batter. I mean, <laughs> you want to talk about good. That is incredible. So fries on the plate. This is the best part. Oh, yeah. Fries on the plate. Mound those babies up. I want to try one of these with that herb, with that herb salt. They're just going to mound these up. The great thing about this meal, too, is that so many people oh, yeah. can enjoy it. So you can, you can look after a big group of people in a relatively short period of time. You can make, you can get your fries prepped. You can get all your, your fish prepped. You can see here, I don't know if you guys can see that. See that thyme and rosemary and salt that's on that fry? Every time you take a bite of those fries, you're going to get a little bit of that, and it's just going to improve the flavor so much more. Okay, so now I've got, uh, I'm going to put a little bit of our remoulade on the plate. I'm telling you, now the fries love this remoulade sauce too. So we'll take and put some of that right there. Oh my goodness, looks so good. Babe, if you want to get a, a lemon and we'll do some uh, lemon wedges, we'll put that on there. Like you said, a lot of lemons in the outdoor chef kitchen. <laughs> a lot of lemons. So let's see how this is coming up. So, number one. I'm just going to lift this momentarily. That beer batter has affixed itself to that tail. It's attached to the fish. It hasn't floated off. And you notice that there's nothing on the bottom of that tray. So there's nothing that's stuck to the bottom. They're floating freely. And this is what's really important. You want to make sure that there's enough free oil because these deep fryers are not like commercial deep fryers. So what happens is as soon as you put even room temperature product inside them, immediately the oil begins to cool. So don't overcrowd it. This goes the same for if you're doing chicken wings or anything you're doing. Make sure to give it enough time, number one, to recover, and number two, don't crowd that pan. I think these are just about ready to come out. They're nice and golden brown. We'll literally take, and I'll just hold that for a moment. Now we got lemon slices that's going to go on the fish. Lemon on the fries from the herb salt. Yeah, I'm literally, ooh, it's hot. Make sure you got a pair of tongs. Too. Make sure you get He's a pair of tongs. Hands. He can basically stick his hand in that. So, so then again, we're going to go back to this beautiful herb salt. And we're just going to light these babies up. Same thing. That salt is going to begin melting on that beautiful fish. Let's put this on our plate. Put Don't this. forget you got that beautiful drink to pair with it. 